I would like to, uh, to welcome uh, Vasif uh, Kortum from Salt Salt, which, uh, so welcome to on stage, Vasif. Um, Thanks, dear. I think it's very important that okay. you hear really, um, so, I mean, um, Vasif talking this afternoon about the, the contemporary side and what's going on in Turkey. Um, on the, I mean, uh, contemporary art. So Great. thank you. We got a little preview of that from Prem's presentation this morning to give us a sense of what that innovative mission statement and positioning is. So looking forward to your presentation. Thank you. I guess you can hear me. Okay. Um, I'm kind of an oxymoron here. First of all, I mean, we don't, uh, we're not a museum. Uh, we are not something else either. We're an institution that was founded in 2011, you may say we're a future institution that, in that regard, not built. Experience of the past or, or, the, or the legacies of the, of the legacies of the past, it's a different model. But I don't want to uh, talk about that uh, today in particular. It's been a, it's been a rough time in Turkey, as you all know. So in the morning I got up, uh, well, I did not quite get up. I tried to sleep last night and uh, tried to kind of rephrase everything that I was going to, I was going to say before. That took a bit uh, more than, uh, more than uh, I was expecting. So I shuffled it back again. Uh, so it'll be a mishmash of, mishmash of uh, previous talk and and this morning uh, conversation. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, I mean, institutions are put to test in times like this. Uh, we have to think of where we stand in terms of history, on which side of history, on which side of history we stand, and um, what is our worth? Uh, what do we take to the future? What do we take from the past? And how we can legitimize or you know, are we legitimate are we legitimate institutions in times like this? And how do we become legitimate institutions in times like this? And uh, certain geographies are always tested as as you know, some geographies at least are more tested than the other. And uh, this is a geography that's being tested quite a bit. I think there's some Okay, can you hear me now? Or maybe I can, I can speak louder. Okay, let's do it. Okay. So, uh, we, used to be extra, we used to be able to extrapolate two fundamental models for museums. One will be the monastery model. It's a place isolated from the outside world, a place where ideas can be developed or preserved despite all adverse conditions outside the wall. These ideas will become dormant seeds that could germinate days, years, and decades, sometimes centuries later, like the monasteries preparing the basis for the Renaissance knowledge. But these are mostly examples of totalizing ideologies and utopias, and eventually they become co-opted by the dominant culture or art history, for example, the collection as we know it. Fundamentally, the monastery model, this model, was built from inside out. When the time is ripe, it's broadcasted and colonizes the processes. And unfortunately, these days, this model has been occupied by financialization. The other model could be the square model, as in public square, like Gezi or Tahrir and a range of others, which is a form of instituting. It asks for a public space. It is where a radical rejection of the status quo becomes much more urgent. It has the potential to hatch outside of the boundaries of itself constantly. It creates immediate and real ruptures in the current system. It is open. Such an open-ended revolution is opposed to a total revolution, the kind of revolution that was envisioned by the historical left. Rather than having a master plan to reject the post-colonial order, 
and its regime de savoir, and sanctioning just one type of, the knowledge, of knowledge production, it provides diversity and shuns monoculture. Culture is about contradictions, rejections, and negations. These open-ended models, these works in progress, move like an operta opera, like an open op opera. And these are able to expand public space and political participation. This is the antidote of staying locked in the condition of a microstate, microstate as an institution, within a community of those who speak, share, and seek the same ends. The future is about what to do with the time that remains. We know with some certainty that the Anthropocene age is expected to come to an end at the end of the first half of the 21st century. I can say it with the same certitude, and certainly without any trace of cynicism, that my generation is passing on to the next, to its offsprings, a much worse planetary situation for all living beings than the one we had inherited. Hence, I actually find no moral authority to speak about the future. But I will not let, want to let go, completely go, of the activation of culture's capacity to help produce a bona fide civic society. Where then the future of institutions fit in all this if we are not to speak about future institutions in metaphorical or technocratic terms? The institution experience today is reduced to the visitation of new sacralized architectures of start kits. But this is merely a plebeian experience. This is not a democratic experience. And this plebeian experience has little to do with the actualization of civil society. Starting at the end of the 1970s, museums have been participating in an economic condition which was a death wish. And like healthcare and education, they are no longer immunized against the storm. This is when welfare, welfare society and principles of post-fascist Europe began to crack. As a result, museums have been engaging in an increasingly sardonic, a cynically deceitful exhibitionary sphere that has to be supported by large experience management departments and brand development. Panhandling to the fossil fuel industry, the elites, the oligarchs, and the sheikhs have become the new normal. In short, we have become clumsy neoliberal machines and are asking to be replaced by more efficient neoliberal structures. Because, let's face it, and make no mistake about it, we are actually supposed to be non-capitalist machines in an age of financialization. Now, if we are to come back to the models, there's a power-based lack of communication between the institution and its outside. The outside, cannot find a space for its desires to be recognized. Its desires are dictated, shaped, and ordered by the institutions, because, in essence, the public has no voice. But public may not be the issue anymore. Perhaps worse, a possible public is excerpted from the equation and replaced by processes of managerial quantification. Seamless spaces are laid out between the customer and the provider in a charade of exhibitions, ranging from motorcycle to pop stardom, spaces of spectacle, spaces of powerless socialization, spaces of leisure, and spaces of catnapping. Secondly, I would like to recognize and stress that we move in at least three temporalities. The institutions act in the present time, but it carries, but they carry an ever unresolved active past and an, image, and an imagination for the future or for futures. This means three kinds of publics, not only a contemporary, contemporaneous public, but there's one in the past and one for the future, all locked into a singularity. This singularity cannot and should not privilege the present. As Walter Benjamin states, if the past insists, it is because life's unavoidable demand to activate in the present the seeds of its buried futures. Furthermore, 
I'm more and more convinced that whatever an exhibition produces cannot only be assessed in the moment of its actualization. Contemporaneous assessment is a joke. It's, a mere, it's merely a subordinate technicality. There are a number of provisional ways we deal with today's terrain. Salt has a different dispositive. One is the notion of visualizing research in what I call a post-curatorial paradigm, where different subjectivities from the professional, academic, or purely curious and interested are assembled around the making of an exhibition. The result may even look similar, but how we get there is very different. Our experiences are not commodities, nor is the participation around our programs. The late capitalist exhibition model is about being present in the contemporary, as opposed to being contemporary. The question remains for me, when is a project finished? At SALT, we have to expand the time frame, produce post programs, release publications after the projects, and resist, resist the very obscene idea of a sell-by date. All this is done not in grand sense of historical correction, but as models of producing subjectivities and hoping that the rest of culture will somehow take care of it, use it, play with it, develop it. This is in tandem with our political, political position that art and consequently exhibitions are not for everybody. We hold no such claim, and we have no interest in what you may call the masses. In other words, something that has no shape or voice, that cannot be abstracted or sounded. We don't have an interest in that. But we are extremely interested in anybody that we can enter a discursive, agonistic, supportive, negative discussion with. And we can see in clear ways that through our exhibitions, temporary communities are produced and not deprived of our labor, our knowledge, and research. Now, to come to a close, I keep asking myself about an exhibition which was close to us, me. The Age of Suleiman exhibition that took place at the Metropolitan National Gal Gallery and the Art Institute of Chicago. What if the outcome which was part of a deal between Philip Morris and Turkish government at that time. What if Philip Morris was not the sponsor of the exhibition? Would the tobacco farmers remain as farmers? What if tobacco farming was not completely destroyed in the years after the, this agreement in the hinterlands of the West Aegean? What if the farmers did not turn into coal miners feeding a ravenous energy industry? Would the farmers who became miners, would they have died as they did last year in hundreds in the Soma mining disaster? These are things unspoken. Two models, monastery or the square. The monastery has been occupied by the tyranny of the contemporary, and the square is merely in emergence. We become our own worst enemies in our reticence to act together. We lose the capacity to consult a potentially collective intelligence. Thank you. Thank you, Vasif. Thank you, Vasif.